so this is the DJI Mavic Air. Uh, still an amazing bit of kit and easily my favorite drone for when I'm traveling and hiking. Um, it's also an incredibly popular drone for people getting their first drone, especially with what you get for your money. So today I'm doing quite a big video uh, in two halves. First half is gonna be uh, for those people that have just got their Mavic Air and wanna go through all the setup uh, functions to actually get yourself flying. Uh, the second half of the video is going to be going through some of the things I've picked up over the last 18 months or so, uh, flying the Mavic Air, that hopefully will help you get uh, even more out of this amazing bit of kit. So if you've been flying for a few months, you might want to skip the first half of this video and jump forward to wherever it is I'm indicating on the video now. Uh, but I don't know, if you actually watch the whole video, you might still pick up uh, the odd extra tip that you didn't know about before. So maybe watch the whole video anyway. Um, anyway, either way, let's, uh, let's get going. Uh, a lot to get through. So start off with the basics. Uh, once you've unboxed everything, the first thing you're going to need to do is get things charged up. Uh, the batteries in the remote can take around an hour to charge up, so get those going first. The remote charges up by the micro USB in the side, so you have to unplug the attached cable. The main batteries charge up directly from the charger. You can't charge it via the USB-C uh, socket on the actual drone itself. So if you're traveling, you always have to take your charger with you. Whilst the batteries are charging, let's get to know the drone itself. Uh, take off all the little stickers and unfold the four main legs and the uh, two smaller feet as well. The feet are really important as they contain antenna which will affect the range, so always make sure you extend them when you're flying. Insert a micro SD card as well. You may need to get some tweezers to get the card in and out if you've got fat fingers like me. The Air does have 8 gigs of internal memory on board, but that's only going to be enough for around 10 minutes of video, and putting the card in massively increases your capacity. The props can be removed and replaced by holding firm and twisting. Make sure you match the dots and the rings up so you get the right prop on the right motor. Drones actually spin their props in two different directions, uh, two go clockwise and two go anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. When you fly and change speed or direction, the props are actually slowing down or speeding up to vary the lift or pull, which will move the drone in a certain direction. So each prop is actually responsible for literally pulling or pushing the drone. So you do need to make sure they're on properly and that they're not damaged. Elsewhere around the drone, you've got a few sensors that help the drone land and avoid obstacles, which I'll go through later. Inside the drone, you have got a ton of electronics, including the GPS and accelerometers that are constantly measuring and assessing what your drone is actually doing in relation to what you're commanding it to do. And this allows it to stay steady and not drift with the wind and fly exactly in the direction that you tell it to. It's also got a pretty amazing camera at the front, which is mounted on a gimbal. This means as the drone moves and tilts and gets blown about by the wind, the gimbal compensates and the resulting footage remains silky smooth, which really is one of the greatest things about gimbal-enabled drones. However, when you power up the drone, the gimbal goes through a self-check and moving in different directions. So you have to make sure you remove the gimbal clamp before you switch it on. Otherwise, you're gonna get a gimbal motor overload. So when your battery is charged, clip it into place. Hopefully you'll have a spare. They take around an hour to charge, and whilst the specs tell you you have about 21 minutes flight time, in practice, various safety protocols kick in as the battery runs down, so you'll actually only get around 16 to 17 minutes of flight time. Take a look at the remote control. Open it up, fit the little joysticks. The default settings are that the left stick will control altitude and spin, whilst the right stick is gonna control directional movement. So basically the left stick goes up, down and turn, whilst the right stick is gonna be moving the drone forwards, backwards or sideways. On the back, you've got the gimbal wheel. This moves the camera up and down from looking straight down to horizontal to the horizon. You can watch my video on smooth camera settings to adjust the movement settings to get this part of the uh, functionality super smooth. And finally, in the center, you've got the switch that changes the flight modes. For now, you want to leave this in P mode. Sports mode increases the uh, speed of braking distance uh, pretty massively. It's seriously unforgiving and is easily the quickest way to overshoot and crash. So my advice for the moment is leave sports modes off, play around with it when you're way out in the open countryside and you're well used to how the drone's handling. The FM button is a customizable button along with the black button on the right, and that'll allow you to sign certain functions via the Go4 app, which I'll go through in a little bit. And on the top left, you've got the manual return to home button that you press and hold to get the drone back to your takeoff position if it's all gone wrong. More on that later though. 
So you can use the remote control as it is without a mobile phone attached, but you will get way more information and functions if you do connect your phone when you're flying. Uh, you need to have downloaded the Go4 app from DJI beforehand and you connect the phone to the remote via the correct cable for your phone, whether or not it's iPhone or Android with a micro USB or USB-C. You get three cables included, so just fit the right one for your phone. The cable sits in a slider, but to be brutally honest, uh, this kind of serves no purpose other than to make things more fiddly. I unclip mine from the uh, slider and never look back, leaving it loose. It's a lot easier to attach to the phone. So once all connected up, the phone will display the view of the camera and uh, also a whole load of information about the drone itself. The drone is linked to the remote control whilst it's flying via extended Wi-Fi, meaning it's going to have a range of anywhere between 500 yards or meters right up to about 2,000 yards or meters. But again, I'll come on to the range later. So once everything is charged and connected, you're almost ready to switch on. If this is your first DJI drone, you're going to need to set up a DJI account. It's free and it links your drone to that email address. So it's easiest to do this on your PC or laptop beforehand at DJI.com. So when you power up the drone and the remote and open the Go4 app on, on your phone, all you need to do is enter the email address and password straight away. Now it's a good idea to power up the drone in your back garden or even inside for the first time, but not to fly it inside. Seriously, flying your drone inside is bad news. The GPS locks aren't uh, stable, it'll hit the wall, props will stop and it will fall to the floor. So uh, save the flying for outside. But the first time you actually power up the drone, you're going to have to go through some setup options and possibly do a firmware upgrade. So it's good to have uh, Wi-Fi or the internet uh, handy to carry all of that out before you're actually out in the open field. Powering up the remote and the drone itself requires the same two press command. A quick press, release and a long press until you hear the beep. The first time you power up, it'll take you through the main features of the screen, which I will in a second. Uh, it'll run through a small quiz to make sure you know the basic rules about flying. And it'll also prompt you to update the drone's firmware. To do this, it needs to download from the internet, as I said, so your drone needs mobile data or Wi-Fi switched on. Let it download the firmware package, then upload to the drone. And this can easily take quite a few minutes. But eventually, you're going to get the uh, blue bar saying, go fly. So now's the time to switch it off, head out and find somewhere good to actually fly the drone. So if this is your first time flying a drone, there are some real basic stuff that you probably want to know. Uh, first off, sounds obvious. Do everything you can to avoid crashing. Most crashes will result in damage that requires expensive repairs. You can watch my other video on the most common causes of crashes and flyaways, as all of these situations are likely to happen. So, for your first actual flight, try and find somewhere that's wide open, far away from people, buildings or trees. Choose an area where you can set your drone onto a flat ground or a wooden table. Anything metal nearby is going to mess up the drone's internal compass and it'll ask you to recalibrate the compass. This is easy, but you do get bored doing the merry little dance each time. And if you're going to take off on the ground, make sure dogs can't get to it, as they will often go mad when it fires up and they can really hurt their snout or eyes if they rush over to the drone with the prop spinning fast. Before we get flying though, the phone screen layout has an incredible amount of information and all of it is important, so I'll quickly go through the main points now for you. The default view is the main camera view, with a smaller map in the lower corner. The drone has got a built-in GPS, which is the single most useful feature for flying steady and not losing the drone. GPS means that it's going to record the home point location each time you take off, and this is where the drone will fly back to if it loses signal with the remote control. This can often happen if you're flying too far away, you suffer interference, or fly behind a hill or a building. So if it does lose signal, all is not lost. What it's going to do is try and reverse its path for 30 seconds, trying to re-establish connection. Uh, if it can't do that, it'll then rise up to the preset return to home altitude and fly direct back to you in a straight line. You set the return to home altitude in the settings and obviously it needs to be set higher than anything that is around you so that if it does come back to you in a straight line, it's going to fly over the trees and not into them. The little map in the corner is really useful when you're flying as it always shows the orientation of the drone and the direct line of flight needed to head back to you. You can actually swap the views over if you just tap uh, the little map, it'll jump to be the main view and tap it again and it'll swap back to being the small map. Up top you've got the main status on the left. Ready to fly vision means it hasn't yet locked onto enough satellites, which is shown on the right of the top bar. Once you've locked on and it goes green with a ready to fly GPS, means you've got accurate GPS and you're good to take off. Along the right, you also have the battery and signal strength indicators. Keep an eye on both of these when you're flying. And the far right lets you dive into the main settings. 
I don't necessarily want to go through all of those uh, here now. Again, my smooth camera settings video will go through the main settings that you can adjust to actually smooth things out. Most of the defaults are actually set up pretty right for you to start off with. And finally along the top of the screen you've got the main moving flight indicator bar. It's really useful as it actually shows you how much flight time you've got left uh, to safely get home again. The further away you fly, the quicker it moves down as it knows it's got a long flight home. Keep in mind it's not going to consider wind direction. On the right you've got the camera settings. Again, I don't want to delve too deep into these here. Suffice to say that you toggle between the snapshot, photo and the video and you can adjust the settings in this screen here. And along the bottom you've got the horizontal distance and height above takeoff point. Remember this isn't the height above the ground where the drone's actually flying, it's always relative to the takeoff point. So the ground, if the ground is rising up slightly, watch out. Likewise, if you're flying off a cliff, it will show negative values if you descend below your takeoff point, which is absolutely fine, not a problem. On the left, you've got a few key commands as well. Automatic takeoff, automatic return to home. You've also got a shortcut to the various intelligent flight modes, which again are fun, but another video in themselves. And finally, the APAS, which is the Advanced Pilot Assistance System. Again, a video for another day. So, long time coming, I know, but are you actually ready to uh, power up and take off? Uh, well, just like the first time you ever drove a car, a couple of key commands you need to know what's happening and crucially how to stop it. Um, you can take off automatically by touching the takeoff button and sliding the button along. This will start the props up and lift up to around four feet. It's equally just as easy and gives you better control if you start them manually by moving the sticks to the five and seven o'clock position. Once the props are running, gently move the left stick up a tiny bit and the drone will gently lift off. And at this point, you can let go of the sticks because this is one of the best things about a GPS-enabled drone. If you want it to stand still, just let go of the sticks and it will just sit there doing nothing until you tell it to do something. So if you're a little bit confused or disorientated, that's the golden rule. Let go of the sticks, uh, gather your head, get your head sorted and then start moving again. So get the drone up away from you and gently move the joysticks to figure out how it works. Remember, when the drone is not facing the same way as you, the controls are going to be relative to the drone's direction, not yours. So left can mean right and forward can mean backwards. And this will catch you out until you get used to it. So have a bit of practice and get into the habit of just letting everything go to a stop then tapping the stick ever so slightly in the direction you think it should go in to make sure you've got it right. And then finally, just have a bit of fun. Uh, fly up a bit higher, spin it around, get used to the controls. Just keep, as I said, well away from obstacles. Remember, everything looks a little bit further away on the small screen than it is in reality, so keep an eye on the drone itself and don't get sucked into just viewing the, the screen itself. And finally, to land, all you've got to do is move it to the area that you're happy to land in, move the left stick down so the uh, altitude drops right down, it'll stop at about three feet above ground level, and once it's happy it's safe to land, it'll just uh, drop down onto the ground and the props will switch off. Alternatively, you can actually tap the little button on the left to, to land itself automatically. So that was everything I wanted to go through for the initial setup for the Mavic Air and get yourself flying. When you've been flying a bit and you've got used to the controls, then each time you actually go out, there's some other things that you need to consider in order to get the best out of the drone and, uh, and have the most fun. One of the most obvious things, it sounds obvious, is weather. What's it doing and what can go wrong? Uh, rain, snow, never great. Uh, but don't necessarily let a bit of wind put you off. Um, I did some testing and I've done another video on flying the Mavic Air in strong wind. It actually handles strong wind really well. Uh, it won't be long before you see the warning attitude too large, backwards or forward obstacle avoidance sensors not functioning. Uh, it's not an error at all. All it means is that the air is having to tilt into the wind so much that the sensors are no longer pointing forward but are actually pointing down and they can't see what's in front of them. So like I said, it's not an error, you're fine to keep on flying. But other things to consider, uh, when you've chosen your spot, do a quick self-check on what could go wrong. I really hate the word risk assessment, but a bit of common sense to look around you and think what could actually go wrong here uh, is always going to do you a, a good favour. Are there power lines, are there people, trees or buildings? Uh, you really don't want to be flying over people. Your pictures and videos will look rubbish generally and people are never impressed with you or drones in general when they see one buzzing overhead. So find somewhere far away from people. Make sure there aren't any power lines near you because the sensors won't see them and uh, the power lines can also interfere with your compass and signal and they're a bit dangerous. Um, check which way the wind is blowing as I said earlier. Um, always fly out 
uh, against the wind so you're flying home with the wind and uh, you should be fine and obviously check what area it is you're actually flying over if something goes wrong and you need to land fast uh, are you able are you going to be able to walk out and retrieve it or will that prove difficult some people get a little bit nervous flying over water. Well, certainly if you hit an overhanging tree or a bridge above a river, then the props are gonna stop and it's gonna fall straight into the water and you will definitely lose it. But otherwise, if you're flying out over open water, there really isn't any difference between that and flying over land. As ever, just don't push your battery. Another consideration, as I said earlier, uh, will any people or animals come over to your takeoff or your landing point? It's never good to try and land with loads of people uh, watching you. And as I said, dog dogs can go nuts and uh, really hurt themselves if they dive into a drone once it's landed on the ground and the props are still running. Another good idea is to keep an SD card tucked away in your bag. Sooner or later, you're going to get out there and realise it's still sitting in your computer at home. The air's internal memory is good, but there's only enough for about 10 minutes of uh, video. So uh, keep a spare one just in case you forget it. And when you're flying, as I said earlier, keep an eye on the really useful uh, flight indicator, the time indicator on the top of your screen. Um, it is a really good gauge of how much fun you've got left. Don't push your luck because uh, it won't know about the wind, uh, as I said. Uh, on that, keep a spare battery charged up so you don't have to push your battery to the limit. You really do want to have a spare battery and maybe get a car charger as well so you can charge on the go. Without exception, people trying to get that very last picture and pushing the battery to the limit is normally the reason something goes wrong and they end up uh, losing their drone. In the initial setup, I also mentioned make sure your return to home height is higher than everything around you as well. So if things start looking like they're going to go wrong, just hit that return to home button and let it come home to you. If gulls or other big birds start taking an interest in your drone, you probably want to get out of there fast. They can dive bomb the drone and if they hit the props and the props stop, all that's going to happen is you'll be watching your drone plummet to the ground and smash. If birds start swooping your drone, uh, best thing to do is actually lift your left stick up, increase the altitude to get above them and at the same time try and fly away from them. As soon as you've got space between them, then you can start descending back uh, towards yourself and get right back towards the ground. Another thing that can go wrong is signal dropout. It has to be said, the air can be a little bit quick to lose its signal, but if that happens, don't panic. It's usually the video signal that's dropping out first and you can still continue to control the drone. Try increasing the altitude of the drone a little bit to get a better line of sight between it and you and the remote control. Uh, obviously make sure that you are facing the drone square on and that you've got your antennae up like that, not pointing towards the drone, but they should be square facing the drone. And if you still don't have any joy, uh, press that return to home button on the remote for three seconds or tap it on your screen uh, to, to get the drone heading back to you. And finally, if it does go all wrong and it does crash somewhere, remember the Find My Drone function that will lead you right back to the last known GPS coordinates of the drone itself. That is often enough to get you directly to where it's landed. Again, I made another video on that. Watch the video so you know how it works. So when you're up flying and filming, there's a lot of things that are going to affect the end result of the video you take. Adjusting the control settings and adjusting how you fly and set up the shots is key. I'd already mentioned the smooth camera settings video earlier for the adjustments to the controls, which really do make a huge difference. But I go into more detail on how to change the way you fly and the position of the drone in the second part of that video, smooth settings too, smarter flying for better video. A few ideas that you might want to try out there, so maybe check that video out too. So a very long video today, I know, but I had truckloads of stuff I wanted to try and get across to you. And hopefully now you have a fair bit to keep yourself uh, having fun and safe the next time you go flying. Uh, remember, you're always going to have way less signal interference with the Mavic Air if you're far away from buildings or any other Wi-Fi sources. That's why I always love taking it hiking uh, when I'm up in the mountains. It's uh, so small, it's always in the backpack, it performs fantastically, and you get some pretty cool shots. So on that, I have to say, until next time, have fun, happy flying, enjoy the footage.